is Dr. Lewin. You're in Engineering Math 1. And today we're going to be dealing with the applications of integration and volume and how we apply that in physics. So, this is We have a solid which has a charge and it has a charge density rho. Let's say that's four microcoulomb. And we know it's that it's modeled by the function y equals x square. And this graph, if this, this there was a graph around it, it would intersect with the line y equals four. For simplicity, um, let's say the distance from the center of the solid to this proton was R1. The distance from the proton to the spring was X1. The distance from this point in the spring to till its final compression is x2 the displacement of the spring is x2 and now this is a solid by the way just so you know now we want to know the volume so cuz if, if if we know the volume we know we can multiply that by charge density rho and get charge and from that we can go ahead so how do we get the volume well here's where we apply our disks method that and the disks are all piled on top of each other and they're of very very small thickness and that thickness would be dy so let's have let's try one method there's another way of finding volume but we can try this method let's solve for since y equals x square for this model let's solve for x that's square root y equals x and then the x is like the r and area equals pi r square and x we can substitute x for r so pi x square in this case x is radius then we can have integrate from top bottom to top so volume would equal from 0 to 4 that's where they intersect square root y square and I forgot the pi inside that's very important pi r square dy now that's pi r square that's one disk and from 0 to 4 so let's simplify it first so this comes out to be pi 0 to 4 y dy and integrating we get from 0 to 4. When we substitute 4 for y, we wind up with 4 squared is 16 divided by 2 is 8, so that's 8 pi. And that is, uh, just to show its volume, units cubed. Okay? There would be another way of doing this, getting the volume we could do that by using the cylindrical shell method but we won't get going to that right now uh... okay so now that we have the volume q of this, this is q the total charge of this solid is q let's just say sum equals volume times rho charge density that equals we're, we already solved for volume which is 8 pi times rho which we're given for micro coulomb so put that as that equals q and now that we have q I'm not going to substitute everywhere but just show you we can get the force uh, that's k q that's q and q of the proton QP proton R square. This is R square. Actually, there's no need for this subscript R1. It's just R. R square. 
and mass and now acceleration equals kq p r square mp in proton so that would be the acceleration now what we could do is since this distance is pretty small we could assume that the acceleration and the force is uniform so we could use the one of the big four kinematic equations it's going to be this one vf square equals vo square plus 2ax uh, vo square is zero because it's initially at rest so that's zero and we are solving for final velocity that's the point when it's right next to the spring and just before it collides with that spring. There's an inelastic collision. Uh, that And that x, let's substitute x1. That x1 is the distance going between that. So then we can solve for vf square, vf. And once we do that, we have final velocity just before the inelastic collision. And when you have that, we can use the conservation of energy. So total change in energy is zero. And we can use the change in, so negative change in kinetic energy, because it's losing velocity, equals uh, the change in potential energy, the spring. By the way, first, even before we do that, we need to consider this inelastic collision so that's just going to be m1 mp m proton velocity plus this that's the block let's call it m b for block v which is zero so it falls off equals final velocity so vf of m P plus and plus B. We can do that and solve for final velocity. And then we can use this theorem, cons conservation of energy, and that's half mv square equals half kx square and solve for x. And that x, by the way, is x2. And that gives us our final answer. So that's how you'd use calculus in physics. Thank you.